What's up, YouTube? Well, got a little something different for you. I had to go back to my roots. I'm originally a Mustang guy, so I started with. And I had a friend of mine bring me a car. And it had a bunch of problems with the EFI system on it. The car, we first got it, ran a little rough. And then he started messing with it, and the car wouldn't run at all. So... A buddy of ours said, I know you can bring that to to fix that thing up and get it running. It's one person I know, it's him. And I'm the lucky guy. So, here it is. He brought it to me. And uh, after speaking to him, we decided to just throw a carburetor on it and get rid of the EFI setup all together. So... I'm not going to get into detail what the car needs and stuff. I'm just going to give you guys the basics of what you will need to do a carb swap. What will work, what won't work. Cost effectiveness and so on. So as you can see, it's pretty empty under the hood. All the original harness comes out, computer comes out. That's all stuff you can keep and hoard away. If you ever want to go back to EFI and decide you want to restore a car. As for this one, this is a little weekend warrior. And it's it's not the prettiest car in the world. So this is probably never gonna go back to EFI. But I still did it in case for some reason somebody does get it and wants to put it back to EFI. So first thing you'll need to do you have to order everything you need to go carbureted. And then you have to pull everything out. The fun stuff. So, if you go on late model restoration or 5.0 resto or you simply Google search something like uh, AN hose conversion for 87 to 93 Ford Mustang. A kit will pop up, it comes with two lines, 6AN, and it comes with two fittings to adapt from your factory fuel lines into a set of fuel rails. A lot of your old school blower guys and stuff use this kit. Um, I use it to easily adapt into the factory fuel lines and run AN hose to a regulator. This kit here is used. We got it from a buddy of mine. Um, so he got it cheaper than $80. But as you can see, it has two different hoses. That's because of whatever he did with his setup. But it, it works. So he bought the kit. Relatively cheap. Next you'll need a T right here. A little T fitting. As you can see, that's teed before the regulator. So what that T allows you to do is it allows you to feed into the regulator and then it loops back into the return. Now what this does, it allows you to use one of these cheap Holly regulators, which are about $40. And this way you can adjust your pressure without it spiking crazy. Usually if you use these regulators and you just go without this T, if you don't use the T, this thing will spike to like say 12 pounds and it'll leak usually right past a diaphragm into here and leak out. I know that because I did it many years ago before I knew all this. So if you tee off before the regulator, this allows you to run as much pressure as you want, but also get it down to, well, zero pounds of fuel pressure. Um, basics are for this, you want about six and a half pounds of fuel pressure. Uh, that's normal for a carbureted setup. Then you just get some 3 8 fuel line and run it into a fuel log, into a Holly carburetor. I like Hollies. I won't use anything else. Maybe a Brawler or a Proform, something like that. But they're all based off of a Holly. Um, find yourself a nice used Holly 650 if it's a stock motor. Some people are going to disagree with that, but 
I've been relatively fast and drove a lot of miles with a stock 302 and a 650 double pumper carburetor. Uh, this gentleman here, this intake I didn't recommend. He went and bought this on his own. Uh, but you can get any carbureted intake. Um, if it's a stock setup, you're you're not going to want something too big. You're going to want something from about off idle to 6,000 RPM. Um, as you can see, we put a one inch spacer on the stock intake. I tried to get them a little bit more performance out of it. So that way it just runs a little bit better. Now, on this end of the car, you will need a throttle linkage. So these cables you can usually buy off eBay for about 40 bucks or so. Uh, I've seen them as cheap as 38 and as high as 80. So I mean, go on eBay, you can buy one of these, just put in 79 to 85 Mustang GT throttle cable or any Ford really should work. And then you can get yourself a Ford bracket. Uh, what I usually do is I usually buy like the $20 Amazon bracket. I'll go on Summit and I'll buy this piece here for a Ford. And it ends up being about 50 bucks total. Uh, this gentleman bought this nice AED one. And it was like $100. So you can save about 50 bucks by doing it how I do it. He just wanted it one and done. He didn't feel like searching for parts, and he kind of wanted everything now. So he just bought it like this. I had to modify this part here and actually lengthen this slot forward to fit this cable. So I slotted that. That way this would slide up. This actually ended right about where the back of this is, and it was pulling on the throttle linkage. So it, it would, would have been like probably half throttle. And it would have hung the throttle open, and the thing would have been through the roof RPM-wise. But So we'll have to modify these. Some of them are worse than others. But you will have to take a file in here, maybe drill you know, two holes or something, and then file them out and connect it to this slot. So that way it brings it you know up to here or however far you got to go with it this isn't hooked up because this carburetor actually has to come back off because it leaks he got that for free from a buddy and you know he wanted to try to use that and it, it didn't work out and then you can use your stock distributor you order this pigtail it's about 12 bucks and uh order spool uh red wire and green wire your red wire will go to the positive side of the coil. And then from the positive side of the coil, it'll go to a 12 volt power source, key on power or a toggle switch, whatever you prefer. And then this green wire goes to the negative side of the coil right there. So I got it wrapped up in this nice little harness and then your last wire will go to this bolt here, or you can put it wherever. It's just a ground. As long as it's grounded, it'll work. These three wires I depin out of the plug. As you can see, there's nothing there. And that's pretty simple to do. And then to the inside of the car. For this... I de-pin the fuel pump relay, the two wires in there. And since they have female connectors on these wires already for the relay to plug into, I simply just put male connectors on the wires I put in there and slid them together and taped them up. This way you're not cutting anything out of the car. And if you ever want to go back to EFI you can simply put your connectors back together under the seat for the fuel pump get rid of this harness that you make and throw everything back to factory and be able to put it back to stock and not 
ruin the car and wreck the car and whatever these guys that are diehard fuel injection stock fox body restoration guys <coughs> whatever purists say and call it when you put a carburetor on a Mustang um, this car has a bad ignition switch on it so we just went to toggle switches but you can make it where everything comes on with the key. Uh, toggle switches on something like this. This is just a, a track beater, really. This isn't like a, you know, it's not a nice car. Be straight up. It's not. It needs a lot of work. And he just wants something to have fun with and tinker with. So for something like this, toggle switches are nice. Uh, the one thing right here with this distributor, using it this way, it locks out your timing so your timing will always be whatever you set it at if you set that thing at 10 degrees you're not going to have a curve it'll be at 10 degrees whether you're at idle or whether you're at 8500 rpm there's no rev limiter valve springs are your rev limiter at this point but what's nice about that I like lock timing. It gives torque. I like the timing where it's all in right off the start. Right out of the gate. As much timing as you can shove in one of these where they like it, where it's efficient and effective, it's usually 36 degrees on an E7 headed combination like this. Stock motor. So that's what this is set at right now is 36 degrees total timing. When this gets hot, yes, it will crank hard. But the nice thing about the toggle switch is you can get the motor cranking over with the key, hit the toggle, boom, car will fire, it's on its way. You can use a MSD box with this setup. You might have to rewire it. The MSD instructions are fairly simple. And you can put, I like using a digital box that the laptop plugs into. I forget the part number off the top of my head. I want to say it's like 6013 or 6015. It's one of them boxes. Um, and you can actually put a start retard in it. So the thing will start at zero degrees and you can make a timing curve and all that. This way, you're literally running off of this right here, this TFI. That's it. That's what your ignition box is on this setup, is this TFI. So you have no timing control except for what you turn this distributor to and clock it at with a timing light. So there's that. Um, another thing is your factory oil pressure gauge, water temperature gauge, and your factory tack will not work unless you get a pigtail and go into a schematic and figure out which wires are what and you run those wires to the pins that go to the body harness. In this case, this is getting all aftermarket gauges in it. He wants aftermarket oil pressure. He wants aftermarket coolant temp pressure or coolant temperature. And he wants a, a nice big monster tag that will probably sit right there like all the 90s and 80s Mustangs did. Because that's a signature look. Some people like it. Some people don't. But that being said... This carburetor does leak, so I can't leave the pump running. So I'll surge the pump, turn the ignition on, push the clutch in, give it one pump, two pumps, push the clutch in. runs now it's not going to stay running obviously because this carburetor is garbage it leaks out of every port possible um unfortunately he he went out and bought another carburetor already so that's got to be switched but this one leaks fuel out of these throttle linkages right here and the boosters drain it needs a rebuild and it needs a base plate on it but there you have it. I mean, you can see it started right up. It ran good for it not having fuel. 
and that that's how you do a simple cost effective carb swap on one of these cars without ruining the car and cutting into the harness and everything else it's very simple i wish i would have knew this when i was 18 because i would have totally did this at 18 years old instead of messing with the efi uh my one car the computer was bad in it and i was months and a lot of money uh trying to source it I, I bought brand new injectors bought a used set of injectors i had everything used and i ended up buying a lot of new stuff brand new set of 24 pound injectors uh mass air meter and all this stuff that it ended up being the computer the whole time and uh, my car would at least run it bellowed black smoke run pig rich and we swapped the computer with a buddy's car his car wouldn't even run and we put his computer in my car and the thing started right up and ran beautiful so i had to end up buying another computer and nowadays they're not cheap the stuff is money if you're doing something like this, and you just want, sorry, there's a truck passing by. And you just want a nice little effective setup. You can even sell the factory EFI out of it if you don't want to hoard it and you don't care about putting the car back to EFI. You can sell the stock stuff out of it. There's people that buy it. And you almost break even, if not make some money. It depends what intake and stuff you have, but. Say you buy a car, 3500 bucks. it's got an Edelbrock upper and lower or a Trick Flow upper and lower or some type of good aftermarket upper and lower intake on it, that's five or $600 you can get for that intake. I'm not counting what injectors are in it, that don't even matter. Uh, it might be a selling point to some people if it has 30s or something in it, 30 pound injectors, but it really doesn't matter somebody wants an intake they'll pay four five hundred six hundred dollars sometimes more sometimes less depends on your area and uh then you got the harness and computer left if it's a mass air car you got the mass air meter still there or you can do a whole package deal and sell it all cold air intake sell it and it'll pretty much pay if you're good at parts searching it'll pay for the carburetor swap if you don't care at all about ever going back to EFI and really at that point you can cut the harness and do whatever you want if you don't care but this is a nice way to not ruin the car where pigtails aren't cut because some people look at these cars and they go the first thing they go to are these two connectors if you see something cut in one of these even for me it's a deterrent from the car depending what I want to do with the car because now I know for a fact that trying to put that back together is going to suck what issues did they have with the car what wiring issues did they have with it is it something on the body harness or was it just something going to the ecu and the, the engine harness you don't know though unless you have the original person that did it that tells you why they did it then you're not going to ever know but this way you walk up to this car uh, it's got a carburetor on it all right you look at this nothing's cut Oh, okay, it's got all the harness there, everything's there, I can plug right back into it, put the EFI on it, sweet. It's a good selling point if you have somebody that is looking at the car that's carbureted, but they want to go back to fuel injection. And then under the seat with the, re the fuel pump relay, you can just put that back together and pop the relay back in and go. I mean, he has the relay, I threw it right in here. So this is a very cheap, easy way to just put a carburetor on a Mustang and not wreck it. So there it is, guys. Hopefully this helps you guys out a little bit. Some of you guys that don't know. Even the guys that do know. Hopefully it helps you guys out too. That way you can see that not every carbureted Mustang is just completely wrecked and ruined. There's still hope out there. You can still put the EFI back in some of them without having to chase down wiring gremlins and go into the body harness and replacing body harnesses and repinning connectors and or wires on the body harness that are cut in half and all that. They're not ruined. They're very capable of going back to normal. So there you guys have it. A little carbureted action on a Fox body.
like comment subscribe let me know what you think let me know other stuff you guys want to see I actually had a couple people asking for this so there it is you guys have a good one